welcome to the next episode of Gallifrey Pirate Radio. Um, I'm joined tonight by Clayton Wick and Angela Pritchett. Yes, and we're going to discuss um, not the first Doctor Who Christmas episode, but the first real Christmas episode that they've done. It's actually Christmas based. I mean, a lot of them have been set on Christmas, but this one actually had a, a true Christmas theme with it. Um, we're talking about A Christmas Carol, which was, um, I guess you would consider it Matt Smith's, yeah, it would be Matt Smith's first um, Christmas special. First one written by Moffat, who, uh, when he when he wrote it and, and decided to do this one, wanted it to be a true Christmas special. Um, kind of like Charlie Brown or... How to Grinch George Christmas, but something that really focuses on Christmas. Um, so let's jump off, and what did we really like about this uh, Christmas special? Uh, overall, I just think that it's probably one of the better Christmas specials that I've ever seen. It, it takes the whole story of A Christmas Carol, which is about as worn through as any of the old Christmas stories can be that have been remade over and over again. I mean, Mr. Magoo has done a version of this story. And Bill Murray. And it does something new and interesting with it, I think. Instead of just being sort of a straight-up retelling like so many other versions of the story have been before, this one switches things up a little bit and... It draws inspiration rather than just being a remake, and I think that benefits it a lot. You, As a viewer, you sort of follow along with the plot beats as they're happening because you expect them, but then they don't happen the way you think they're going to. And I think that's really fun. And there's also a time machine. Well, yeah. So what did you like about this episode? I real this is I love this episode. It's just it's fun. Like you get to see flying sharks and sleigh-led flying sharks and Albus Dumbledore being mean and grumpy and pretty singing and pretty costumes and it's Christmas and there's fish flying around in the sky and it's just lots of fun. And Amy and Rory and their funny little outfits. So it's kind of like Halloween and Christmas all in one. See this is kind of interesting. Um, I'm not going to say this is my least favorite of the Christmas specials but it's pretty low down there on my list. Really? Well, you yeah, saw really. when, I, when I picked the Christmas special, um, there were three of them that I said. Yeah, no, I mean, but I mean, we have to cover them all eventually. Um, I mean, it's not bad. And honestly, I think the, um, I mean, I like parts of it. Don't get me wrong. Um, I thought it was really creative and stuff. Um, but it just, it didn't grab me the way I had hoped, especially huh. with this being Moffat's well, first one. When I watched this, though, I was brought into it with Doctor Who at the proms. So I had that like hour, two hour beautiful orchestra concert on BBC and then this episode. So it was just like a wonderful Christmas night of Doctor Who. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I just, I mean, and honestly the thing that I think hurts the episode, I mean, it, that really bugs me the most about the entire thing is the singing. Oh. The singing really, really bothers me. I, I love when there's no singing involved. Especially when all of a sudden she's singing and then there's an entire chorus behind her, yet there's no chorus behind but her. That's why they got a professional singer to play the character. Yeah, but I mean, it just, it, little things like that bothered me. Um, and also, I hate to say, what also bothered me was, is that the, the, the two, the, the, the same character was touching himself in a different time period, where, they, where they've said time and time again, you never do, um, because... It, it could destroy the universe. It's a Christmas miracle! Also, the Doctor has done it before. Also, they clarify that due to the altered memories, they're no longer the same person. And we just saw four Doctors touching each other in the last thing we watched. In a non-bad way. <laughs> oh my god, that sounded horrible! <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna go with the fact that <laughs> the machine did not recognize them as the same person. Therefore, they aren't the same person. Yeah, but you see, I hate to say it, I enjoyed what we watched beforehand more than this. This might be one of my favorite Matt Smith episodes, if not one of my favorite episodes overall. Really? Yeah. I just thought it was very well made, and that it, it just 
was a very well told story. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, there's lots of stuff I like about it. It's just there's just certain elements that just stop it from being really higher higher on my list. Don't get me wrong. Moffat at his worst is Davies at his best. I mean, I mean, just just as a comparison. Um, I just, I don't know, maybe, maybe it is because A Christmas Carol has done, been done so many times. And it just, maybe, the, maybe that's what it was. But I'll say this, I thought it was absolutely brilliant the way they handled the ghost of, of Christmas Future. I think that was probably one of, one of my most favorite things. Oh yeah, that, that Be moment is just one of the more yeah. really pieces because of storytelling I think Moffat has ever done. I never saw it coming. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what made, made it absolutely brilliant. Because, I mean, I, I can respect the genius of the episode, the writing and everything. It just doesn't come together the way I would have hoped. But then, you know, I don't like a lot of Christmas specials. I mean, just to be perfectly honest, I, I just think they've been really overdone. Um, but there are a few that I really do enjoy. I love How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Seuss. And, I mean, you can't beat Boris Karloff narrating a cartoon. Oh, right. Um... And I, and I even love um, Scrooge, I mean, another retelling of A Christmas Carol with Bill Murray. One of my favorites, too. Which is, which is a much darker take. And um, I, I'll even admit, I love Christmas Vacation, which Chevy Chase. I mean, there are a few out there that I like, but I mean, and I can't wait to see Harold and Kumar's Christmas. Oh, that's... And don't forget that's what Die Hard. That's another one of my favorites now. Oh, yeah. Die Ooh, Hard. Die Hard! I never even thought about <laughs> yeah. Die Hard. And I'm the girl of the group. Die Hard. I'm talking a man movie. Die Hard is pretty Junior much the Hard. best Christmas movie ever. No, I, it's still for me, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You can't be bored. Well, I will say about this Doctor Who episode, I'm now terrified to go in my closet because there's going to be a baby with spider legs running around. It's See, okay, they only exist on that planet in the right. future. Why? I'm pretty sure because, you know, the Doctor always tells the truth. Rule number one, Doctor always tells the truth. Even though his little card was all squiggly lying because finally a lie that it couldn't yeah. handle. But no, um, and, and I'll admit, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do this year with the Christmas special. So excited. Which is a take on Narnia, which I think is going to be very, very interesting. Awesome. Just, I think a good example of how well written it is, is it takes the things that you most closely associate with the Christmas Carol, I think, the three ghosts, mm -hmm. and it does something really novel and unexpected yeah. with every one of them. The first ghost is supposed to be the ghost of Christmas past, and instead of doing the traditional thing, which is to take the Scrooge of the story and drag him back into the past. Yeah. Instead, the Doctor just presents Scrooge with with his past. Yeah. He actually goes back in time, he changes it in front of his eyes. Yeah. And I'll say, I love the way they filmed that. Yeah, I love the way they were recording and he was watching it. I, yeah, it was great. Another brilliant moment. Then, then you have Christmas Present, where you have... Amy just sort of dragging him onto the ship so yeah. that he can witness everything that he's doing. <laughs> yeah. And then Future, which is, of course, supposed to be the one... That's supposed to be the one that scares him straight. Yeah. And it is, but in a way that you don't see coming. Exactly. Yeah. It, I, I love that he even subverts it himself when he says, What, I'm supposed to die cold and alone? Well, guess what? We all do. He is not fearing that part of it. Yeah. So, and the doctor knows that, so he goes with something even worse. Oh, yeah. He forces him to confront what he used to be. Yeah. And he realizes just how much of a disappointment he is. Oh, yeah. And... It's it's kind of heartbreaking when the younger version of himself mistakes him for his father. Yeah. Oh no, I mean, I, it just there were many many brilliant moments, but it just it didn't come together for me. But I mean, Moffat definitely did. And honestly, I hated the flying shark with the sleigh. I love the flying shark and the fish. I mean, that was Santa absolutely needs brilliant. Sharks, forget reindeer. Sharks. Rudolph the red-nosed shark. Or wait, no, sorry. Rudolph. What are you sorry. About? It would be Bruce the Red Nosed Shark. No, no, because there's too many copyright issues there. No, the sharks just ate Santa's. Right I would here. say we. I would say you could just call that Jaws Five, but dun, that's already the name of a Bruno dun, Mattei movie. Dun, 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 so what are you hoping we're gonna see 
with this next Christmas special. I mean, we've seen the trailer, which I think looks really, really good. Yeah. Um, Fighting. Um, it definitely looks more action-packed and faster-paced than this previous one. I'm not even going to try and call it. I think that it's a... The trailer is cut in a way that makes me think it's going to be very misleading. You think so? Yeah. Yes. There. I don't know. I, I think maybe for once, you know, we might be... Because we know it's an Arnia tale. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be straightforward. The, the only... The only mis the only real odd mystery about it for me is the inclusion of the people in those spacesuits of some sort. Yeah. Um, so that I think that's going to be the interesting twist with everything. Um, I, I, you know, I'm curious to see. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be there watching at Christmas Day. Right. Um, um, I, just, I don't think there's much of a point trying to predict this one. I think it's going to be completely out of left field. You think so? Yeah. I am, I am upset that we're not going to be getting a, a preview of next year's episodes. Um, There's probably a very good reason for that, even yeah. leaving aside their shooting schedule and not allowing it. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no shooting. But Moffat just did say um, they had started production on the 50th anniversary. Yay. Um, and, he, and he explicitly said that the way the tweet sounded to me was the reason why they're doing the odd shooting schedule this time around, even though his original thing was they want to shoot not in the wintertime, I have a real, I have a real feeling is that you know, and I've said this before, instead of just having you know you the twelve episodes, the thirteen episodes, he, he wants the the twenty six, mm -hmm. um, to really tell the fiftieth, um, with the first half just doing nothing but lead up and build it up to the fiftieth anniversary, um, it would it wouldn't surprise me at least if they shoot this back to back, um, but I, I who knows maybe they've shot something that they could tease us with. Because um, it will be really weird not to have any sort of teaser at the end of the Christmas special, especially since now we won't even get a confidential for the Christmas special because confidential's been canceled. I have a hard time seeing them go going 26 with it, though, just because it's a very... Being the doctor, I understand, is a very physically demanding role, and I don't think they want to kill Matt Smith. <laughs> well, I mean, well, with... With some of the episodes um, for this previous season, they shot a lot of stuff out of order yeah. um, to keep people confused. Um, they, you know, they might they might get a break between the two seasons, but I really do think they're going to be filming some of the 50th anniversary this season to confuse people about where where stuff takes place. Oh yeah, because um, Moffat's really good with that, and they've been. Amazingly, I mean, they've done an amazing job keeping confidentiality when they need to, mm -hmm. um, because the the entire thing with River Song never leaked, which is pretty amazing. Um, Even though it was very much, everyone knew what it was. Most people, not everyone. Not but everyone. Um, but you know, I, I, you know, I can't wait for next season, and I hope they tease this with something. I don't, I don't care what it is. You know, it could be flashes of. Anything. I just I want something. Since we, I mean, because like I said, we're not getting confidential this this time around, unless they surprise us with a confidential episode, which I really don't think they're gonna do. Maybe we'll get lucky and get something like the trailer they did for the uh, the half season mark, where it was just a single shot that revealed absolutely nothing yeah. and used absolutely no material from actual episodes well, filmed. Like I said, I don't care. I just want something. I want some because you gotta. I want something that's gonna last me to August. Well, that's why they're giving you a Christmas special. Well, yes, that's what always I mean. the books and the audio dramas. And the iPod apps. Yeah, well, I don't have an iPod. Or, I mean, or iPad. Yeah, I don't have an iPad either. Yeah. The I game's fun. Um, I just wish they would actually start releasing some of the um, the games that they released on, like, the Wii and on the oh, DS over here. Oh, they released the Wii game. I want to play the Wii game um, so Well, bad. one thing I did hear, which is also interesting talking about the video games that might hopefully help us along to August. Um, Sega has uh, joined, has gotten on board with Adventures in Time, which is the Doctor Who MMO. What? Yes. Um, that was revealed maybe a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. 
Sega's on board to, to help with that. Which, if Sega's on board, that might mean we might get an American release. What would you do with a <laughs> Doctor Who MMO? Uh, Adventures in Time? I mean... You get to be a doll, like, exterminate, crap, the Doctor I, I don't, so honestly, I don't know. Um, there, you, very the, little has been spoken about this, other than it's called Adventures in Time, and that's an MMO. Players could be, what, unit agents, maybe? Well, I mean, that could be one of your things. I mean... Maybe it's like, wow, you could be bad or good, so you could be like Cybermen or something. I, I die, Lex. Or, you know, if this happens during the 50th anniversary, who knows? Maybe we get the Time Lords back. Maybe you could be a Time Lord in there. Cause we Try don't... to escape Galfrey before it explodes. Well, the thing <laughs> is, well, one thing that they have not addressed is that, and they've mentioned this before, this is Big Bang 2.0. Things of the past are now here in the present that weren't there before, like the Cybermen. All their planets had been destroyed. They had been wiped off the off the face of the Doctor Who universe. Right. Um, now they're back, and they're not the Cyber Cybermen. They're the real Cybermen. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they haven't. I mean, they haven't touched on the fact that you know, Gallifrey might be back. Um, you know, it may all the time war may not have happened now. Um. Because I honestly, I don't recall them referencing the Time War um, since the um, since the new season started after the, in season six. So it, it may never have happened now, and the Doctor might still think it happened, and you know, and everything. And why would the Time Lords go looking for him at this point? He has caused them so many problems, so much pain. I don't think that's what's going on though, because. That would require more of a direct connection between the Davies and Moffat runs than we've seen so far. What, the time war didn't happen? Yeah. I, I think that... I think that Moffat has been very careful not to use too much material from the Davies run to keep things more accessible, so that it only requires about a... You know, so that you don't need to worry about more than a year's worth of Doctor Who knowledge. Well, I mean, I would disagree I with that. I just want to see Captain Jack back. Well, well, what about River? I mean, we see River's death in the I Davies. I saw River a lot last season. I just want to see yeah, Captain Jack. Yeah, but you see her, but but you see her the season before she gets reintroduced in the Moffat run. Yeah, I, I think, and and the Weeping Angels. Right. Exactly. Which, which are, I mean, which, of course, I mean, all that stuff was written by Moffat. Right. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's he brings in some of his own stuff, but for the most part, it seems like. You could very well consider the Davies and Moffat runs to be separate continuities if you wanted to. I mean, there are clear connections, but, I mean, there's so few direct ties, and I think that's deliberate. I think it's just an attempt to keep well, I mean, things accessible and easy to understand. Yeah, but I mean, that's always been Doctor Who. Yeah. I mean, that's always been Doctor Who, regardless of who was who was showrunner at the time. Yeah, I, I, just, think, I, mean, I just think that bringing in the time war and all of that it, it could very well be the setup for the 50th anniversary yeah. special or something but just for like a season plot or something i don't see them doing it because it seems a little bit too much like continuity porn than what moffat seems comfortable for the doing. 50th i think all the doctors are going to get together and try and solve global warming oh wait <laughs> don't make fun of that Oh, I so like bad. the Arizona solution. Oh, you're so bad. It was amazing. That's from oh. Oh, come on. Look at those computers that we're using. That was, you know, state of the art back then. 1993. No, that was not state of the art in 1993. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Maybe in England it was. Not here in the States. So, what else? Do we have anything else we want to say about the Christmas special? I enjoyed this one. Yeah, it's... You can suck it. Mm. I enjoyed this one. Well, well I'm just saying it's not my favorite. One of the things I like about it is that it's so simple and concise in the way that it sums up all mm -hmm. of the stuff that you need to know on the actual Doctor Who side of things instead of the Christmas Carol side of things that I think you could show it to basically anyone and they'd understand it. Oh, yeah. Such a sweet it's, story. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it's, it's really good at 
just getting across, hey, this is a guy who does time stuff. These are the two people he hangs out with. He's trying to save them by turning this guy into a better person. Yeah, well, I think Moffat, Moffat ac accomplished what he wanted to with this. He wanted to make a true Christmas special. Yeah. And I think he did, hands down. No doubt about it. And, you know, I think it's brilliant. It's just not one of my favorites. And this season has had a great way of bringing in Harry Potter actors. Come on. The, the Venice one? The vampire lady? Oh, she was in Harry Potter? That was Malfoy's mom. Oh, was it? And then, then Dumbledore? That wasn't this season. That was, was the last, last season. season. It's yeah. Matt Smith. Yeah. The Matt Smith series. Yeah. Oh, I knew that was Dumbledore. Okay, that that's Dumbledore. that's two. How many others have been There's involved? a few more. I'd actually have to look them up because well, I can't remember. Also, the, the actress that played Mo uh, Moni Myrtle. There's um, Moni Myrtle, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. the, um, headless, the headless Nick was in there. Oh. Wait, there's a whole bunch of different. Well, John Cleese. Ones. I'll have right. to look and see. There's John, a whole bunch yeah, John of people. Cleese was. John, yeah, John Cleese hasn't been in. No, okay. John Cleese I hasn't. Yeah, no. Like I said, I'll have to look it up because yeah. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Yeah, but I know Morty Myrtle has. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my oh, head. Who's she? She was in uh, For Love of Monsters. Oh. Which some people think is one of the worst episodes. I think it's Davies at his best. I had so much fun with that episode. Um, that was also the Blue Peter uh, monster uh, episode. Okay. Where, where a kid got to create a, mo a monster uh, through Blue Peter, and that was the episode. And actually the host, or not the host, the um, one of the producers of Blue Peter was actually that monster. Cool. Um, okay. I know way too much about Dr. Who sometimes. Um, but yeah, Blue Peter, um, this is weird that we're going off on a Blue Peter tangent. David Tennant. Yeah, David Tennant. <laughs> Yeah, he, he was, um, what character was he again? He was, he was Barney, crazy... he was, um, the, the kid, Barney something's kid. I can't yeah. remember the exact name. So, I think we should probably call yes. it a day. Yes, Bye, so, um, this is, uh, Gelford Pirate Radio signing off, where we got a big surprise coming up, if all goes well, um, this month. We um, yeah, we remember I talked to you about it last time, you are like, tells you, me asked, anything? you asked me... What the big surprise was? I want to know what the big oh. surprise is. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hurry up and turn the camera yeah. off so I can see. Yeah, what I'm gonna big be surprises. surprised too. Yes. Oh no, you don't get to find out. Why don't I get to find out? Because I said so. Don't You're worry, so it's mean. new to me too. You're so mean. You're gonna not make me mean. cry. And that is Gail. Ow! That was horrible. You don't put shows in the show. Yeah, don't. You thought it was funny, don't. right? Write in the YouTube comments that you thought it was funny. Yes, this is Gallifrey Pirate Radio trying to sign off yet again. And Check until us out next on time, Facebook, Gallifrey Pirate Radio. Yes. Facebook. Good night. Bye.